we're pleased to be joined by Marianne Molina, who's the president of GSDNM, um, an agency that's uh, based in Austin, or at least she's based in Austin. And uh, yeah. she graduated from the SOJC in 1993, I believe. Yes, that's okay. correct. So welcome. Um, so I, I loved looking at your um, website and kind of preparing for today. Um, uh, it says, um, we are, hold on, let me just pull it up here. We, we are uh, a band of misfits, artists, musicians, entrepreneurs, and clay. <laughs> <laughs> you can mold us into anything you want. <laughs> Tell me about your work. I mean, you, you have some very interesting clients, everything from, um, you know, the Air Force, uh, you know, just a, a, wider, a wider range of, of, of clients. Yeah, you know, I love that you bring that statement because it actually goes to um, kind of just the founding of GSDNM. This August, we're 49 years old, and um, the premise of GSDNM is that we, we've all, we started different, you know, we we were started by four University of Texas graduates who wanted to stay in Austin, stay together and make a difference. They were just a bunch of crazy hippies doing multimedia shows on the campus at the University of Texas and somehow found themselves making a difference during a super important time, which really parallels the time to which we sit today. And um, they were they were uninfluenced by Madison Avenue. They lived in a place that thought different, that was different, and also was clearly different in just the state of Texas. Austin has always been this amazing place where it's a capital, it is a music city, it's a creative city, and now it's a technology city. So the creativity that lies in so many different areas of Austin, when you take the people, the founders of GSDNM and Austin, and you put those two things together, you get that statement, which is just a really unique place that um, I feel so fortunate to have become part of over the last, I've been here for 21 years. And wow. so um, GSDNM started different. Like I said, we didn't grow up uh, being raised by Madison Avenue and trying to be like New York. We just grew up um, getting really lucky and partnering with some of the most amazing business builders of the century. So obviously mm -hmm. our biggest and most longest client is Southwest Airlines. Mm -hmm. And we're going on a 38 year partnership. So, you know, you could put that as to put it in Oregon terms, very similar to Widening Kennedy and Nike. Like these are brands and companies that grow up together that influence each other. And um, the thing that makes GSDNM super different is our entrepreneurial spirit. And I think that's part of, you know, even if you look at something like Southwest Airlines, these are people that created things that did not exist before. Mm -hmm. And at the time that GSDNM was created, you know, ad agencies were on the coast. And obviously over time, Widen, Fallon, GSDNM, like there's started to become these amazing brands and agencies that have done something different. And now obviously advertising comes from everywhere. And we hope to see that really influence what we see out in the marketplace and the culture that mm -hmm. we're creating. Mm -hmm. But what's different about GSDNM was that it was born in Austin. It mm -hmm. definitely is part of our secret sauce. And even decades later, it's part of why we all love working there because we all love, we all love living in Austin and being part of something that's a little bit different and it influences the way we think for sure. Mm -hmm. How has that, um, that spirit sort of informed your own compass as you've navigated your career? I mean, if you can think back to when you were, you know, sitting in Allen Hall or, you know, um, was that? Yeah. <laughs> no, I'll tell you a funny story. So when I started at the University of Oregon, I was in the business school. And I remember having like this real epiphany, something that I just, I didn't even have the concept of. But I started like, I think I was taking an accounting class. And all of a sudden, I, I was learning like there was a process and a way and there was this box and there were these steps that you needed to know. And I was like, I don't like being in the box. I want to be like, give me the problem and we'll solve it from any different way. And so very early on, I was like, I'm not in the right place. <laughs> like this idea <laughs> that, that there is a, 
uh, anything within finance, you know, this very kind of like finite way of doing things was where I was like, yeah, this is not the way I think. <laughs> and so I felt so fortunate to have um, encountered a friend who was in the journalism school and um, she was super brilliant. And the way she talked about, again, I'm not even sure we used these words back then, but it was about collaboration. It was about people who thought differently coming together to solve problems versus learning an expertise that's very, very important. And if you have a mind and a talent like that, and you can learn the specifics of, like I think of being a lawyer, being an accountant, these are things, engineers, by God, you need to know exactly what those rules and regulations and protocols are. But it just wasn't the way that I thought. And so when I heard her talk about collaboration and working on teams and having different expertise kind of come together and that that's what created the outcome. I was super intrigued by it. And that's how I changed my major and joined the journalism school. Mm -hmm. So you've weathered recessions before. What's your advice to students that are encountering, um, you know, uh, that are graduating into this mess of an economy that we're yeah, you know, I think it was a mess of an economy in 1993 when I graduated. You know, it was not like it was a, a growing marketplace by any way, shape, or form. And um, keep it simple. Like, it is just the thing that is so important when we go into these times. You keep it simple, focus on what you love. If you can find a way to cross those two things, you'll be able to focus on where you put your energy. Because I feel like in times of recession, it's easy to be overwhelmed by just the blanket statements of the economy and the lack of jobs. And if you can be keep it super simple, what is it that you want to do that you want to go out and pursue? And then what is it that you love and cross those two things? You'll be able to be focused and break through um, and get the job that maybe there's only two of them. But when you can put all of your effort and energy into what you really want to do, you'll be more likely to get the job versus going for 12 jobs because you feel like, oh my God, it's a bad economy. I got to take any job I can get. Mm -hmm. You know, that's such an important message. I mean, I think what you're really saying is that I think sometimes in creative fields, young people believe that, you know, they have this hunger and they've got to kind of contort themselves to try to figure out what a company wants without actually also thinking about whether or not that company is aligned with their own values. Um, and then therefore there's, they're starting out the gate with a, you know, with a bad relationship if they, if they find that they're in a place where the company doesn't, you know, um, and I, I don't know how we have, how we twist that script and have students realize that it's just as important that they attune to their own uh, sort of inner sense of purpose uh, okay. rather than just go show, you know? <laughs> That's exactly right. Well, that focus, <laughs> that focus is, um, I mean, I think it's something that you, you, you really hone the more you work and you have experiences where you're like, oh, I thought I would like this and I didn't like that and being really open to that. But mm -hmm. your starting point, you want to be super finite about it because it will get you where you want to go faster, I think. Mm -hmm. I want to invite uh, Alyssa uh, Jivik uh, into the conversation uh, who's just recently graduated from our program. Alyssa, please introduce yourself and I know you have some questions. Yeah, um, so my name is Alyssa Jivak. I graduated actually, hi, <laughs> with a degree in public relations um, through the SOJC back in um, December 2019, so kind of before everything hit. But um, so I have a couple questions of uh, one, how important to you is making connections and knowing the right people when um, looking over the lifetime of your career? Like, did you know them right off the bat or did you gain them over time or was it not even all that important? It's just one person made it all, make it so you can figure it out. You know, um, I definitely have had a different career path, you know, uh, in a sense, like I would tell you, I just got lucky. You know, I really genuinely just got lucky. And, um, but you were prepared for that luck. I was prepared for that luck for <laughs> sure. Like you don't show up not being prepared, but it's not, I, let me, I, it's not like I had somebody who I, I was, I, I was, um, 
trying lots of different things and doing lots of different things and have lived my life by really pursuing the things that I want to go and do as Marianne Molina and using my skill sets and my dreams and my passions and uh, making choices and decisions that are driven by that. But who you know, I, again, I think it looks so different from 1993 to the way the world works now with something like LinkedIn, you know, and, and who you know. But my influences of who I know was like by being, by being in the program in the journalism school, I was exposed to people that thought so differently than I did that I was influenced by their choices because I could see them, whether or not it was doing an internship, whether or not it was the jobs that they were doing while they were in school, like people were doing such interesting things. It opened my mind to seeing that there's so many different jobs in the world. And so while it wasn't like I had a mentor or um, family friends, or I had nothing like that, that was like the people that I went to to get my first job. I really was just super observant to my world that I was in. And there's just, when you're on a college campus, there's so much to see if your eyes and ears are open. So my influences were not so much that somebody took me under their wing and, and I was the top student and I was going to go get this job and this internship. No, I didn't have any of that. I was just out watching and doing and trying on as many things as I could along the way. Okay, cool. Yeah, being as observant as possible, that makes sense. Um, that kind of leads me, because you said with the day and age, having LinkedIn now, I was going to say, how important is it to have that online presence when trying to join this world of advertising, trying to get into a firm and, and that, all that? It's super important because I think the way that recruiters have um, found ways to use data and inputs to get to really focus expertise is brilliant. Like that's the brilliant side of technology is that in this great big, the world just seems bigger with something like LinkedIn. There's so many people, there's so many places, there's so many layers, but the way recruiters are using that data and being able to get us to the right talent at the right place is just totally essential. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> um, I, saw an article about you, I think it was on Digiday, um, that was posted in May 2017, and it ended with a quote that you said, um, quote, but at the end of the day, it's about you and your clients and what you're doing with them, for them. To come into an environment where nobody cared about what anybody else was doing was the most freeing thing I have ever experienced. Taking yourself out of the advertising bubble is inspiring. Do you mind elaborating on that a little bit? I was trying to. For sure. Absolutely. Yeah. I love, thank you for that <laughs> quote. I love it. It's, again, it's why I love working at GSDN. And when I say the word entrepreneurial, um, we learned this lesson from Herb Kelher at Southwest Airlines and Sam Walton at Walmart, which is um, what matters at the end of the day is that you're building your business. And when you work in the advertising category it's super easy to get lost in the advertising bubble of like what agency you work at what director you're working with what all of these things that are super 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 important but all of those things are in service of growing our clients business we are nothing without our clients our clients give us these amazing canvases to create things on and so that mindset of understanding everything we do is in service of growing our clients business is for me a much more inspiring place to play because that's where the entrepreneurial spirit comes in and that's where ideas outside of the box come in and mm -hmm. it's where we hold ourselves accountable that we could go and do the most amazing breakthrough cool thing but if it didn't grow our clients business it is not worthwhile and so having that shift of um our focus is our clients. Our passion lies with our clients and the categories that we are fortunate to work on and the platforms that they give us to go and create things. And so having that respect for your client in those categories and those relationships really changes the way you engage with growing business. You become a lot more than an advertising agency. You become a true business partner. Wow. 
Thank you so much, uh, Mary Ann, and also Alyssa. Just really appreciate you taking the time to make this contribution to our students, and we will continue to follow your success. Yeah, you got Thank it. You.